Hello and welcome to another edition of the UGA Sports Sunday Call-In Show. I'm your host, Paul Meharry, joined by Jason Butt. Sorry if you are listening to this and you have to listen to all of this congestion. COVID hit me for a second time, but we're all right. We're good. We got dogs to talk about, dogs at the Combine. Uh, Jason, a lot of guys made some good money this uh, this week, especially Georgia guys. Again, dominated much like last year, uh, it feels like. Smaller scale, but much like last year in terms of just guys dominating the uh, <coughs> the combine. Sorry about that. And, uh, you know, overall, there's a lot to dig into, so we will. Ben, thanks for joining us. You look like you just, like, robbed a 7-Eleven. Are you I okay? did, I did, I did. You robbed the Royal Farms. <laughs> Are you all right? I Royal Farms. No, I, I'm doing fantastic. Hold up. You look like you're uh... – like from the sh- oh, what's that show? Shameless. You look like one of the sons from Shameless right now. Anyways, guys, if you're watching us, make sure go ahead and put uh, where you're watching us from in the comment section. We'll shout you out. And then if you have any questions, uh, you can also put those into the comment section. We'll get them up here. And if you're feeling really froggy, guys, I know it's the Sunday call-in show. Uh, there is a link to join us. So you can join us, uh, go through the description on YouTube or Facebook, and you can join us while we talk about these dogs and what they did at the Combine. So as we do every week, uh, normally with the POS, I get initial thoughts before we dive into things. So first, we'll start with you, Jason. Initial thoughts from this Combine weekend for the Georgia Bulldogs. Well, number one is Darnell Washington. Uh, is he a top 15 pick now? Mm. I mean, his... The measurables just jump out. I think a lot of us who who have covered or just people who are watching who follow Georgia uh, get the athleticism, but he didn't put up the numbers in the passing game. A lot of that had to do with the fact that somehow he had he happened to be on a roster with a tight end who uh, was the focal point in Brock Bowers. And then you look at the rest of the passing game and just kind of how unique it was. Uh, Lad McConkey, obviously, uh, b- being one of the go-to guys out there, and then then how much they use Kenny McIntosh in the passing game too. And so, uh, you know, Darnell Washington w- was definitely used a little bit, not, not a whole lot. I, you know, I was the one thing I kept wondering all season long was if they would use him more, but then you look at his production as a run blocker as well. And it was phenomenal. And I think w- what you see from him on film in both aspects, uh, everybody saw the ridiculous one handed catch he had where it wasn't like he brought the ball in with one hand. He, he palmed it in the air with one hand. Uh, the hand size, the wingspan, all of those things. Then the 40-yard dash, what was it, a 4.65, height, weight, 265. The, the guy's an absolute freak of nature. And so I think that this combine really helped him uh, in, in terms of, uh, you know, elevating his drafts. Like I think a lot of people thought of him as a first-rounder, maybe late first-rounder, and I think this could have solidified him in that, that early round. Ben, uh, initial thoughts from this week's combine. Um, well, Nolan Smith kind of wowed me. I know Darnell, I was kind of expecting that Nolan Smith running in the four threes. Like that kind of cemented going into the weekend. I think we would all agree there's five players from Georgia who could get taken in the first round. There's five of them. There's obviously Jalen Carter. We know he has a tricky situation, but still assuming he doesn't have to serve jail time or anything like that. He'll obviously still, I think, be taken in the top 10 at worst. Um, then you have, Broderick Jones, he's a first round lock. He had an he had an impressive day. I thought he was the best of all the offensive linemen. So that's another yeah. one. Nolan Smith, um, Darnell Washington, we both brought up, and Keely Ringo, who had a very interesting de- a day at, at the combine for him. If you would have asked me last year, or going into last year, or all of us, after Jalen Carter, who was the prospect we entered the year and said it's probably gonna be the second Georgia Bulldog taken. Who, who do you guys think that would have been? Probably Keeley back then, yeah. Yeah, Keeley. And now he might be fifth. That's that's wow. the shocking part to me that when wow. you really think about it, I mean, he could be third or fourth, but you look at it now and say he's probably fifth on a lot of people's eyes. A lot of the big boards, a lot of the mock drafts. It's interesting to me when I say I feel a little bit more confident about Nolan Smith and Darnell Washington. This isn't really a plight on Keeley Ringo going in the first round coming out this weekend. Then Keeley, who I thought Keeley ran a really good 40. I think his long-term ceiling is impressive. I thought overall a good day for him. And I still think he has a better than 50% chance of going in the first round. But when you look at it, Nolan Smith, I feel pretty confident he goes in round one and Darnell. It's just, is it late or is it mid-first round? 
Broderick Jones, to me, has a chance to be the first lineman taken. He'll be one yeah. of the first three taken. He'll be picked in the top half of the first round. Jalen Carter, he gets that situated. He'll be one of the first few guys picked. Georgia, to me, has solidified themselves as having five first-round picks or four to five first-round picks in the draft. And that's impressive to me that I don't think any other team comes close to getting five. And, I mean, we haven't even touched on them yet, right? But we definitely will throughout the show. Obviously, Stetson Bennett, too, uh, proved himself in a major way. I also want to touch on uh, the other SEC quarterbacks. There's there's four SEC East quarterbacks, including Stetson. Uh, five, shoot, five if you count Hinton Hooker, uh, that all could probably will get drafted. Uh, you know, and that's that's saying something. So it's uh, that'll be interesting to kind of follow that uh, as we move on. But to, to start off the combine, right, you had Nolan Smith who just blew away everybody on Thursday with his 4-3-9. Uh, what was his – let's see, his vertical was also, yeah, 41 and a half. Uh, broad Ooh. jump, 10-8. Let's see, did he do – weird thing is, guys, only two guys that I see uh, did the bench, by the way. So that will be interesting to see who does the bench back at uh, George's Pro Day. Darnell did the bench with 21 reps, and Chris Smith did it with 15. Uh, but like I said – Thursday for Nolan was, I mean, I mean, you want to talk about not playing, you know, seven games, your last seven games of your uh, senior year to now being what, guys? I, I can't wait till these mock drafts update, right? That, that's the best part of all this. They'll update, you know, the next couple of days. But mm-hmm. top 20 player now in the in the, in the the draft? I mean, he, he definitely made himself millions of dollars, right? But – what where did he where did he jump to is he is he a top 20 pick now guys i I, for sure i believe he can be there because you look and the outside linebackers in the draft will anderson's ahead of him we get that defensive ends guys you could rush the pass through tyree wilson from texas tech probably going in the first six seven picks or whatnot and then you look at miles murphy after those two to three guys if we were looking at stand-up outside linebackers, which is what Nolan is, he's probably the second best at his position in the draft. And in terms of just pure pass rushers, I'm not going to include the interior guys. He's probably fourth at worst. So that warrants a top 20 pick because of the position. His position's a premium. It's not like – I think Kenny McIntosh is a really good player, but Kenny McIntosh isn't going to touch that because he's a running back. When you're at a premium position like that, Broderick Jones, he could be the third offensive tackle and be a second or third round level guy. He's going in the first one, the first round. Even though he's not that, I'm just using that as a reference. Foster, said, no, look, look, Foster, Foster Moss said no one moved into the top 10 in his opinion. I, I don't know about top 10. That's crazy. I don't know if there's going to be 10 teams picking pass. I mean, four teams picking te- pass rushers in the top 10. I don't know about that. Because then you got Jalen Carter, you got four quarterbacks, and you got other positions. So I don't know if Boy, he's going to be there. Yeah. So I think that you have to look at it from a perspective of there's players from other schools and team needs up there. I think maybe some team might view him as a top 10 pick, but I just don't think that the board's going to fall in a way that he's going to go top 10. But I think top 20 for sure. Top 20, Jason, for Nolan Smith after uh, this combine? Yeah, I think that's uh, it's at least realistic uh, after this impressive performance. I think he's first round no matter what. I think once if, you, if, he, got, if he slides out of the top 20, uh, I find it really hard at this point to see him fall into day two. So I, I do think he's at least a first rounder. Uh, given what he did uh, this week, and then of course, I, I imagine he'll uh, he'll be very strategic with how he wants to approach pro day. Given that he had a, a pretty remarkable performance, and 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 also got to show that the injuries in the past, and that um, you know any team that wants to draft him is uh, it really really has the green light to use him uh, how, however they need to start the year. Right, yeah, the medicals I think all came back good on him. Obviously, they did. I mean, he ran a four three nine, so we're not talking about uh, you know. Him him slacking there. Rhett Womack brings up a good point. He said, I think Robert Beal really made some money too. Interesting. Robert Beal, third fastest time at the 40 this year for Georgia, posted at a 4-4-8. Uh, Robert Beal was a guy that I thought, hey, yeah, you know, last year, eh, he, he is he is the definition of a guy that stuck around the program and waited his turn, and it, it worked out for him, right? Mm-hmm. So – one six two ten yard split thirty vertical jump is going to hurt him a little bit, but uh, you know I, I think Robert Beal definitely made himself a little bit of money. He, he's definitely draftable for sure. Yeah, I right? think that's the key. He's, he's draftable. Um, 
you know, where. I think last year we were wondering if Darian Kendrick would would get and drafted. Would, and I said he would. You I said, said he, he would. would. And uh, his stock plummeted real quick. I don't even understand. Kendrick, why. yeah. Well, they, well, I think a lot of it was actually the reverse of Robert Beal, where his it forty was. was was really bad, and then he ended up playing a lot for the Rams this year. Yep. Um, but I, so I, I, I'm only comparing them in the sense of that's kind of how I see Robert Beal. I think he's a guy who, uh, a day three guy at best. I mean, if, if he can get if he gets drafted in the fifth round, that's a that's a win. And um, uh, but but uh, you know, sixth seventh round too, I think would would be a, a realistic landing spot for a guy like him. And Beal. um. Beal's also a guy that you could draft in like the fifth round, Jason, and just be a special team guru nut for you for like 10 yeah, years. With that kind of speed, that's, I mean, that's huge. I think uh, the fact that, um, you know, he, he showed that, that kind of ability, that straight line speed, which special teams, obviously with the coverage teams, um, you know, that, that goes to show once you get into de- those day three picks where you are filling out your roster and you need immediate special teams help. Uh, you know, somebody like Robert Beal who can really uh, fit in and, and get the job done there. And then, of course, if he's able to produce um, in, in, in practice, uh, you know, maybe he becomes a rotational player, at least in the short term. Yeah. Next topic here. Rhett brought up. Well, first off, Andy says, uh, who's got the goober grape jelly peanut butter? Andy, we're not talking about that this week, but oh. we got killed in the comments uh, for that. We need to stay on. Is this turned into about- a peanut butter show? Is yeah. this turned into a peanut butter? Yeah. Impossible? Somebody yeah. was angry. Somebody was somebody might have been hangry, not angry. But, uh, <laughs> we're, just gonna, we're just gonna turn this show into like a taste testing, like yeah. one of those. You, you right. see these people on YouTube who like taste test everything. We're just right. gonna taste test peanut butter. But uh, Rhett brings up a good point right here. He says, if anyone says that Bammer's development is on our level, they're off their meds. This is the point I want to hammer home. Mm-hmm. We obviously are gonna get to Stetson in a minute, guys. I promise. Scott Sinclair and his staff deserve a hell of a lot of credit. Obviously, these guys go work out after they they leave Athens with independent trainers. Sure, right? But this is the second year in a row where Georgia has straight up dominated the combine. Put guys out with stupid numbers. Nolan Smith at a 4.39. Last year, Jordan Davis wowed everybody at 330,000 pounds. I mean, Scott Sinclair and his staff, they've got these boys ready to go, man. And all props to them, right? I thought, I mean, across the board, I mean, Broderick Jones, yeah. 40, just gliding across uh, the television screen there. Uh, it seems like everybody came in uh, who was testing was prepared. And uh, and, and so, yeah, I mean, kudos to, to that strength staff and, and, and the way they prepared guys. And that's the thing, I think, with this uh, staff. Uh, they're, they're not only getting – the really talented guys into the program and, and keeping those really talented guys motivated and, and hungry to, uh, to succeed and to be able to perform at this stage. But they've also been able to develop some of those guys who were a little bit under the radar throughout their careers. And uh, I think that's, that's going to show these last two, two combines where um, they, they, everybody's just jumping off the page. And I think you're going to see a, a crazy run of uh, another year of a crazy run of Georgia players going off the draft board uh, all the way through all seven rounds. Yeah. I think one thing to, when you brought the strength and conditioning and like the combine numbers in particular, do you guys remember the 2019 draft? I think it was like Isaac Nauta, Elijah Holyfield, when they went and people are like Holyfield running a four, nine, he was oh, yeah. like a top 10 running back went undrafted. Isaac Nauta. I rem- I recall NFL network had him as like the number five tight end. Went bottom of the seventh round after. Yeah, like to be, uh, the one thing I'll say about Nada is uh, he he got a really really bad draft grade from the NFL, but left anyway. He should have not. He should have not uh, uh, listened to whatever advice he was getting, and that's not to say he would have ever made it after the fact. But he should have not. Yeah, the the, the NFL advisory yeah. committee gave him a pretty low, like basically said, Go, come back. Yeah, yeah, because uh, but I just remember at the time that the combine these guys went and it was like their value, even regardless of where they were projected, yeah. dropped even further. And their combine right. performance, as you look and you're like four nine for guys that are skill guys. Darnell is what I mean. I'm just going to say at least six seven because they did the comparison next to the guy who was six seven. Yeah, who they said was six seven. Who was yeah, so I'm, I'm going to say six seven at least. Yeah, um, like two two sixty five. He's really yeah. playing at 270. Guy ran a 464 official 40. 
and Isaac Nauta was 6'3", weighing whatever he was, running a 4'9", something, you it shows the difference in development, how they're doing it now with Scott. Well, Sinclair, Sinclair. Sinclair's been there since 2016. So I was – But just, they've – it's been he, different. Yeah, yeah, he switched it up, right? Um, but he, he has been there the whole time. So uh, – but props to him, you know, him and his staff, getting these guys ready. And then the secondary staffs, whoever these guys are independently training with after the season, uh, props to you guys as well. I mean, holy shit. These are crazy numbers. Again, every day of this combine, there's a Georgia player uh, that, that really, you know, took over the show for the most part. Speaking about, uh, Matthew Phillips asks, how about Stetson improving his draft stock yesterday immensely? So Stetson comes out, runs a 4.67, and then also uh, his 20-yard shuttle, 4.20, was super high. And then he goes out there and throw those throws those three deep bombs in a row, which obviously there's no pads on, right? It's it, but looked really good. The crowd was in it. Uh, Stetson, I think coming into this, I had him pegged uh, late fourth. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. I think he's like early fourth now, dude. I really do. Fourth. Okay. Yeah. You, what you don't wow. think so? You don't think so, Jason? I thought it was like you know a six rounder. No, a lot of it. A lot of it just. Uh, and I, I don't agree with the assessment. I just think that just having observed the league that I, you know, for as long as I have, and knowing how weird they have been historically, it's like Bryce Young is getting a pass, Kyler Murray got a pass, but will Stetson Bennett get a pass for not being six feet? And I guess Kyler like actually somehow measured. I don't know if he was wearing platforms or something. I can't remember. I remember that being a big deal when he oh, measured yeah. six feet. But, uh, you know, the shorter quarterbacks don't seem to to get the same kind of love that uh, other guys get. And, and for whatever reason, Stetson's been dogged for that. And I, I, I got a feeling the off-field thing in, in Dallas, uh, the arrest isn't going to really um, – as long as there's nothing else going on, you know, related to that. And I, I, don't, I don't see that really hampering his draft stock. But uh, I thought really more, more important than the deep balls – and even the forty uh, time, uh, I, I, well, I thought the the the, um, the shuttle time is probably more impressive, given that he was he beat a lot of receivers. I think with that yeah, time, yeah, he was, he was the third. And, and that and that goes to show just how agile, how quick you can get, and what, what we saw all season long, really the last two years, how quick he can get away and, and, and extend plays. Not because that's that's really where he's making uh, a lot of those plays. It's not the straight line speed; it is evading pressure, turning quick, the agility. Now, the most impressive part of Stetson's combine, uh, I thought, was the the miles per hour, the velocity he was throwing with. Uh, what was it? Something like 56, 57 miles an hour. I think 59. it was in the top 59. 59. Okay, 59. So, which was, uh, I think, only uh, uh, Will Levis, maybe? Was that Will right? Levis tied him, and then uh, Dorian Richardson. Thompson Robinson threw 62, okay. and uh, uh, CJ Stroud, Stroud through sixty, I think. So you're you're talking about a guy who's the, who has that kind of velocity, yeah. Who, can, who has good touch on the deep ball, who can get away and evade pressure. Who's who's shown this past year he can make good decisions. Uh, that was the one thing that I think hampered him two years ago. Um, I mean, I think I think he's a third, fourth round type quarterback. Um, I just still wonder if he's gonna you know, he'll still be there in the fifth or sixth round just based on what you know we've all witnessed with the nfl is that they end up docking guys for the dumbest stuff and for stetson it's going to be he's not bryce young and he's not six feet here's uh ohio dog 95 said uh i want miami to take stet so bad get that injury prone damn <laughs> boy out of there yo stetson in miami in the fourth round that'd be funny i actually think it'd be pretty funny i think mean, in miami yeah he could be the backup the of two. He gets one more concussion. He's done. Stetson comes in, throwing to Cheetah and Jalen Waddle. I don't know. Be a good situation, that's for sure. I would prefer to just retire. I do not want to see that man paralyzed. Yeah, no, um, yeah, yeah. No, no Bama bias. No Georgia, but whatever. Uh, yeah, that Tua, if you're listening, I know you're not, right? Retire, brother. Retire. <laughs> Save what's left of your brain, my dude, uh, because there's not going to be much left you man. know what's weird i think stetson screwed because you said stetson fourth round 
like solid like fourth round Paul. That's yeah. what I thought. So he's he's a hundred percent screwed. Um, because that's what I thought. But if you guys watch the whole the first group, I think because the second group was Stroud, Richardson. I think the Purdue quarterback was in the second round. I mean, yeah. the second group of quarterbacks. First group of quarterbacks. To be honest, Stetson might have looked like the best one. Now I understand with the Will Levis, your guy. I know. I don't, what, know, after this, I don't know after this combine, brother. I mean, I, I mean, might. I get what they mean by the ball flies out of his hands. I saw that. I understand that because some of the times he threw the ball, I'm like, holy smokes, this thing is just flying fast, and it looks like it's about to hit the ceiling. So I get that. His arm is very live. It's just the cannon. You don't know where it's going to land. Um, but in my know, opinion, I, in the first group, I thought Stetson was the best. I mean, the deep balls, he threw the best deep balls of the first group. He was accurate, the timing. Um, He didn't have – I mean – I'm trying to think maybe the third one, the guy had to slow up a little bit, but it was perfect. His accuracy and his arm strength. He looks like he could throw the ball 60 yards. So I need to be in the NFL. If you can throw the ball 60 yards, that's all the arm strength you need. So Stetson as a passer, I thought also his footwork, especially with the first group, his footwork just seemed calm, seemed natural. Like I just thought in the first group of throwers, he looked like the best one, which is surprising to you. I understand Will Levis is all these people like, Oh, look at the potential of this guy. I understand where they're coming from. You could see those traits or whatever, but his accuracy and some of the things, it's not there right now. And when you're telling me Stetson throws the ball just as hard as him, I just think Stetson overall cemented himself because I think Daniel Jeremiah said fourth round, which I agreed with. I think fourth round is pretty solid. So he's going to be a backup with fairly decent expectations for whatever team drafts him. I think he could fit in Miami, Baltimore. I mean, hell, Atlanta. This point, if you guys don't take it, mm. back. why Could not you imagine a, a QB controversy down here of Desmond Ritter and Stetson Bennett? I'll tell uh, you what, I like Stetson over Desmond Ritter. I think <laughs> I do too. I'm 100 percent honest. Like <laughs> I think I do too. <laughs> I, I cannot <laughs> wait to see my favorite episode ever of this was the Paul Atlanta Falcons rant. We just need to see after the draft this year how that goes after they drafted some linebacker from like Grand South Anderson. Dakota, yeah. like the fourth yeah. best school in like South Dakota or something over to Kobe yeah. Dean. And yep. I just remember Paul was just and like, they drafted Schaefer over Sawyer and I, I went off on that too. Which was, I was that, I mean in oh, hindsight that, that was worse. That was that was way worse than uh than Troy Anderson over uh over yeah over to Kobe Dean. It was. Both Gosh. Bad. Guys, uh, if you want to feel good this weekend, the weekend's almost finished, right? But uh, head on over to the Rogue Shop. Use that promo code BULLDOGS10. Get you something to go to sleep tonight. Before we go to sleep, we're going to add in Zinger Dog, old Pin Hurst. What's up, Pin? Hey, what's going on, boys? Y'all doing all right? Man, I, I feel like I'm an uh, airplane right now, just pressurized in my head. <laughs> I understand. I understand. I, I think I've watched more football than I have in, in a month just watching the combine and watching over and over. And I've just had it on repeat for the last three days. I'm uh I'm actually kind of ready to get away from that for a little bit. But uh I was listening to y'all talk about stats and I think he, he threw the ball great. I don't if you noticed, you know, I was trying to notice on the deep ball where the where the balls were coming down. And Stetson's was coming down at the 30 each yeah. time, whereas the other guys were somewhere between the 40 and the 35-yard line. Even Levis' first two throws didn't hit the 30. Now, his last one did when he put a little air under it, but they were even talking about how his his uh, mechanics were jacked and he was throwing across his body even though he had a quick release. You know, they were they were kind of breaking down and that the reason why he's not accurate to the outside is because he throws across his body especially to the left. Um, <clears throat> I, I think that's a, you know, a, 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 I'm just hoping that my Falcons, for the love of God, don't take him at number eight. Just, you know, please. I think they're going to end up with Lamar. If, if they do this, this um, what is it, the non-exempt uh, franchise tag where it's just two first-round picks, I think they're going to go after him. See so them or the Panthers, they're moving up somewhere. You can go ahead and bank on that. They're going to move up and take a quarterback. One of those two teams, either in the draft or somebody's going to get Lamar between them. Have you done well, for Penn, Lamar? Paul is the king time. of the Will Levis fan club, and he right. wants the trade for Lamar. He told me he would trade all the draft picks for Lamar. So I would. He is opposite you. He is he's he's the opposite type. I of wouldn't go fan. crazy, but if they do the non-exempt, that's just two first rounders. We would already. Take a quarterback for sure with the eighth picks. We're only giving up one more. 
Yeah. I would hate to see the contract. Oh yeah, that yes, it would be. Yeah, that would suck. But at the same time, he's twenty six. I mean, you know, I I I don't like. I'm I'm really not a big fan of it. But I know that's what Arthur Blank wants to do because you know he wants to recreate Michael Vick in Atlanta, and I get that because they made God knows how much money selling jerseys. Yeah. Um, with with that whole deal, but I, I really think that that's where they're going to go if they don't trade up and take it. I just I would, in you know if if I had my pick, I would love for them to start the rookie clock over, trade up and take Stroud, and have Stroud and Ritter compete. But I think Stroud's the best quarterback in the draft. And the other thing about Stetson, when you're talking about the fourth round, the one thing that may push him back is his weight. Y'all didn't mention anything about his weight. That's true. He's 194 yeah. pounds. There are no 194-pound quarterbacks in the NFL. I mean, not not the kid in Arizona. His name escapes me right now. Kyler None Murray. of these guys. Yeah, nobody's 194 pounds. And it's not like Stetson had been hitting the gym. I mean, he looks totally different than he did in 21. And he still mm-hmm. only weighs 194 pounds, you know? Yeah, no, that's at, a great that's a great point. I mean, his, the the weight uh, will will likely be a factor. You got to withstand hits, and it's uh, getting hit in college is is hard and it's painful, and it's even obviously as we all know, it's even worse in the NFL. Uh, so <laughs> Drew Brees, Drew Brees, uh, two hundred and nine pounds. I was hoping that it would be a little less. That's fifteen pounds heavier than Stetson. So, hey, look, it's not like we can say, well, as he gets older, he's going to gain weight. I mean, hell, stop he's him. <laughs> <That's> Twenty five, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not like he's going to put on any extra pounds, I don't think. I, I'm hoping <laughs> – look, I, I I hope it all works out for him. I think the one thing he did in the draft was give himself a shot. He's going to have a three-year window where he'll yeah. be on a practice squad or a roster, and he'll get to prove whether he can play in the NFL. And that's all – I mean, if you six years ago, that is all that dude could have ever asked for, you know. And to be a fourth-round pick, he's going to get paid too, so – I think yeah. he's going to be somewhere fourth or fifth round, personally. <clears throat> what about uh, – we haven't talked about him yet uh, because this is a Georgia Bulldogs call-in show, but we love talking about the rivalries. Anthony Richardson, guys. Uh, I mean, look. He's a freak. Every <clears throat> year, every year, Penn, Ben, Jason, there's a guy, right, that the combine, especially at quarterback – loves to just take him from the combine and move him up drastically. And then they go, the best part about it is they go and they cherry pick highlights that back up what they want. So he had like that great, incredible run against LSU. So they showed that they had the the long pass against FSU. It was like a 60 yard bomb. They showed that. And then uh, Daniel Jeremiah, went through one game and was like, yeah, he was 7 of 15, but – Utah. <laughs> yeah. He's yeah. like, he was 7 of 15, but look at this, 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 this. He should have been 14 of 15 with 500 yards, seven touchdowns. Uh, it's like – ah, Anthony Richardson, though, Jason, is the name now. And mm-hmm. where where do we where do we go with Anthony Richardson? I mean, the, there's people saying the Falcons should give him an eight or no, he might not even no, make it to eight. No, I'm no, just – I'm no. – hey – I'm not that person. No, I'm not that person. The thing, the thing with Anthony Richardson is he's he he's the the NFL. One thing we all know and we've learned over our lifetimes throughout the history of the league is the NFL is undoubtedly and amazingly stupid. And (laughs) NFL teams do the dumbest stuff. And so there will be a team. Oh, somebody, th- there was there multiple, will be a team. It Jason, will there be were multiple teams. <laughs> there were multiple teams in Indianapolis that fell in love with there, there, yeah. And, and these teams, they do it every year, and they they love the the freakish measurables, even and they and they like you said, they they just try to they, they love a guy and then they look at the tape and they find the clips where he did well and they ignore the bad. And that's Anthony Richardson in a nutshell. This guy, this guy should be a a day three pick. He's got unbelievable athleticism. I, you know, I, I, I don't know, but like, is he going to be better than Josh Johnson when it's all said and done in his career? Jeez. Or Jamarcus Russell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jamarcus. Well, Jamarcus. Uh, the thing about Jamarcus was could, he didn't he, he didn't want to work. Jamarcus didn't want to work. 
Like, I mean, Anthony Richardson might actually, you know, care just a little bit. You guys, you, speaking of Jamarcus, you brought it up, Pin. Do you remember Jamarcus? Uh, they sent him like the fake playbook or whatever on DVD or something <laughs> yeah. like that. And they were like, all right, make sure you watch it. And it He's was blanking. literally just blank. Yeah. And they were and then like, he said, and then he said he watched it. They're like, yeah, I watched it. Yeah. Yeah. What did, yeah. And they were like, all right, this is, this is it for you. Buddy. Oh, he ate whole KFC buckets before he leaves. <laughs> I mean, I would do the same thing, but it kills your NFL career. But I will say one quick stat, Paul. Oh, beyond, hey, Anthony quick, beyond creative is exactly right. That same guy that the dra uh, Titans drafted last year, Malik Willis. Perfect uh, example. But at least he fell. You know, it wasn't yeah, like. But, but yeah, he fell. It was like third round, wasn't it? Paul, yeah. these are the four um, players who had worst completion percentage that were drafted in the first round the last 25 years. Kyle Bowler. I don't want to talk about that. That's my mother's favorite player. That, that was my <laughs> Ryan Leaf. Mm. I don't know who this guy is. Jim, Jim Drunken Miller. Okay, that oh, name yeah. alone, you're a boss. Uh, I think he's a good he blocker. Did, did he Those are the four quarterbacks. Okay. He Those played are the only four quarterbacks though. with worse yeah. completion percentage than Anthony Richardson. You just said three. Round. You didn't even name the fourth. I did. Jake Locker. Oh, Jake Locker. Oh, And that God, one I knew I was Jake dead Locker. from the beginning. Jake Locker was... No, no shot. I, I don't know. That, that's probably a Mel Kuyper. I'm fawning over him. That's probably why he got picked in the first round. Exactly. Anthony Richardson is the, would be the fifth worst quarterback in terms of completion percentage taken in the first round. The four lower than him are all clear busts. Sorry, Kyle Bowler. I'm sorry, buddy. Um, that, why are you, that's why your favorite player? So this is a, it'll, it'll be a quick story, but a funny one. So the Ravens drafted him. I think she thought that he was attractive or something. So she <laughs> ordered his jersey uh, right away. And he changed his numbers like rather quickly. So we, she is a jersey of Kyle Bowler with the wrong number. That might That's be the awesome. worst jersey of all time. Like I think he wore number seven. He was she's seven, like, the, the jersey yeah. is number eight. Kyle <laughs> Bowler number eight. <laughs> and she's just like, oh, I'm gonna keep this thing forever. It's the greatest jersey of all time. And if uh, anyone says anything bad about Kyle Bowler. <laughs> automatic you had to shut up you're, you're kicked out that's crazy that's, that's her boy i mean even though he sucks he's the only player with under 50 percent completion to be taken in the first round 47.8 percent completion oh. and we took him in the first round God. an organization that's all-time great i don't understand that one he did have a cannon i'll give him that he didn't know where it was going but he did have a cannon 47.8 mom, mom an orioles fan yeah she so doesn't thank watch God as intensely Kyle but she Bowler. loved uh, Kyle Bowler. Thank God that Kyle Bowler was born after Ben McDonald, or your name might have been Kyle instead of instead of Ben. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Ben McDonald, he's he's the goat of commentary, of baseball <laughs> commentary. He is but, good. Uh, nah. Hey, Penn, I gotta get Eddie in here, man. He's waiting. Hey, no problem. Hey, y'all have brother, a take it guys. easy, man. Always good to talk to you. See you guys later. For sure, brother. Let's get old Eddie in here, man. Eddie, where you been? The Godfather. Hey guys. What's up, boys? What's How up, are y'all? What's up, buddy? Man, it's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. Just still reveling in this. It's just still hard to believe that it happened to the team that we live and die with. And is that is that a national championship shirt or is that a national combine uh, NFL combine uh, shirt? Yeah, I know. We'll get to that in a second. But I mean, yeah, it just it, it just seems that everything Kirby Smart touches turns to gold. Um, and, and, and I've never watched as much combine basically guys running around in their underwear making plays than I've watched this weekend. Stetson has some tight ass leggings on <laughs> extremely tight leggings, like his girlfriend's leggings. Uh, yeah. but, he, but he pulled them off. Come on, Paul. I mean, you know, I, I didn't see him pull them off. I am. I, yeah. no. Anyway, uh, I didn't call to talk about Stetson's tights, but if you want to go down that road, we can. <laughs> Um, have y'all, have y'all talked about Nolan Smith yet tonight? I'm sure oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah really. Yeah. I mean, there are a lot of damn good dogs. And to me, after what he did this weekend and what he said, he just vaulted to number one for me. I mean, the guy is an absolute warrior goes out there after a pec injury, destroys the combine, and then basically does a recruiting pitch afterwards about how much he loves the university of Georgia. It's just incredible what it, what that kid has done and meant to the University of Georgia, and been injured for half this year. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I was thinking about this too, and do all 
to qualify to be a DGD, you don't have to come from the state of Georgia, right, guys? No, no. Uh, yeah, because Jordan Davis has to be on there. Right. If, but, if you exclude him. But, but I think some of the best DGDs came from Georgia. Richard the Count. Richard the Count. Uh, now Nolan Smith. Nick uh, Chubb. Uh, Chubb. Roquan. Yeah. Roquan. I, I, I'm saying you can be a DGD from whatever state, but I think some of the best DGDs are homegrown. And you saw it again with Nolan Smith. Nolan did a great, and people forget about Nolan uh, four years ago when he was, you know, his recruitment was going on, guys. And he was the he was the voice of this class. He was the Richard. I mean, what started this all with Kirby was Richard LeCount, right? Now I'll, I'll never forget Richard LeCount being that spokesman for Kirby. But that next guy in line. Uh, was was Nolan Smith, and you saw it again when he when he went to the combine. Talking about Bones, the do you guys know about Bones, the steakhouse restaurant thing they have? The place is crazy. I did know they put in a new restaurant. I thought yeah. it was a bit uh, longer ago. I guess they put in another one because yeah. I know that they had Bones at least like a year ago. They had some restaurant. Rhett Wilmax says it does mean more if you're a DSGB, a down south Georgia boy. Just saying. Now, I don't know, but yeah, he he made himself some money. Uh, what 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 else you got, Eddie? Well, I'm with you, Jason. I think you kind of hit on it a little bit, and I know exactly who you're talking about because I'll talk about the same person and I'll mention them. Somebody's really high on Anthony Richardson, really high. <laughs> and I he's in the he's in the comments right section right now. I was okay. gonna say I think he's in the comments right now. Yeah, there he is, Brent Rollins. Right. Yeah. Brent, you might need to come on, dude, because folks are poking at you for your uh, AR no, take. You no, can, well, you, he's like in the Kyle league. Bowler strat stratosphere. It's a look, no. We already look, discussed this. Look, Brent, can, no. I've got so many drugs in my head right now from this COVID. Brent could potentially, uh, he could he could convince me right now uh, that that Anthony Richardson's a play. I want him on the show. Brent, come on, let's let's talk oh, about boy. it. But go ahead, Eddie. What you're not a, you're not an AR guy. I just can't wrap my brain around it. I mean, Brent lives and dies by this stuff. Y'all know that as well as anybody. And I don't, I don't watch as much film as he does. So he must know something that I don't know. But I watched Georgia decimate Anthony Richardson and make him look like a child twice. And that's the kind of defense he's going to be playing, making bad throws. And I don't think he's very accurate. If it comes down, y'all are going to think this may be crazy. I don't know. If it comes down to the best player available, and the Falcons, I don't think, should take a quarterback. They don't take a quarterback. Here's who I think they should take. Darnell Washington. Put him. I love it. I love it. And Drake London. And you talk about going from a mediocre game I to an it. incredibly exciting game. You got him. At eight? At the eighth, at the eighth take, pick? Take, take him. He's the best no. player. Ever. No, we can, at the eighth pick, we can trade back. To the fifteenth pick, twentieth pick, and get him there and get some more assets. You, you think after what he did? The, the Georgia player I would take would be Broderick if I was the Falcons. Make get it easy to. It, it's more. It's more of a premium. I would not have a That's why I that. say it, Eddie. Yeah, it's I would not have a problem position. with that at all, Ben. I mean, absolutely, I agree with that. Problem. But we all know that that Georgia players don't get drafted to Atlanta. Well, Justin Schaefer ever saw you like you. And John Fitzpatrick. John Fitzpatrick, which right. neither one of them are currently on the team. How crazy is that? Well, I love the thing with the thing with Darnell that I love is it, it helps it helps them out as as a run blocking team and it fits the identity of Arthur Smith and mm -hmm. being a smash mouth team up front and that's Darnell and he can catch passes as a receiver. They use Kyle Pitts like a wide receiver anyway. I mean, I, it's kind of crazy that he's he's listed as a tight end in my opinion. I mean, you put a guy like Darnell in that spot and you can probably do more on the outside with Kyle Pitts. Maybe actually throw him the ball once in a while. Yeah, but, but uh, I love it. I think Darnell fits the Falcons. You, but you, okay, hold on, hold on, Jason, because you, yeah. you immediately jumped to I love it right when Eddie said that mm -hmm. you would be okay on draft night. Because guys, just so you know, we're doing a draft night special uh, on the UGA Sports page. Uh, it'll be live. Myself and Blaine Gilmer will be hosting it, and then we'll have uh, you know everybody else jumping in. I'm sure Eddie will join us at some point. We'll, we'll have everybody jumping in. Ben will uh, probably be there. be after pick eight. I mean, will it just be overload? Say what now? You'll be on the air during the draft, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
okay, when when pick eight comes in, how overloaded will the show get with guests trying to get on? Oh, probably a ton. Probably a ton. <laughs> so just wait till like pick 10 when they all go away and come on. Yeah. Um, but so you're telling me, Jason, because I, I kind of want to have you on at pick eight. If you're saying you're cool with Darnell Washington being he's a, fit. He's, a he's a complete fit. And I think oh he's one of the top. God. I think he's one of the top 12 players in this draft. Ay, ay, ay. He's a fit. I mean, you don't, and he, and he might be. I mean, you don't know at the time. I, I don't know how it's all. We still got a month or whatever. You know, but weird? if he's the best player available, Thank they you. should take him. And that's what that's where NFL teams screw up is they uh, they they will go after position needs and they end up taking a guy who's maybe not as high on the board mm. and they end up reaching for a need. And honestly, he fits, and and this is what he does. He gives you another receiving option but he strengthens your run game. And that's what they want to do in Atlanta anyway. That's what Arthur Smith did in Tennessee. It's what he wants to do here in Atlanta. So I have no problem with it. And I think he is one of the more versatile players in the entire draft. He was so instrumental in this offense for doing a lot of the unsung stuff that we've talked about on this show before, or at least on uh, different occasions. Uh, I I think it works. It's a good fit. I think – Paul, I know that you seem like you're adamantly against this. I, I believe if you really believe he's the best – oh, you, you put the headline up. I think if, if he's the best player available the, – the weird thing about the Falcons is you could say they're a bottom-10 team, but they still might be the best team in their division. It's just nuts to me. That's that's pretty hilarious to me, g- given that the other three teams in the division suck as well. So kind of I would just take whoever the best player is. But is Darnell really a top 10 player? I think athletically wise he is. I would put him in the top 20. Is he top 10? I, I don't know. I I don't know about that. I would put Roderick Jones and Jalen Carter and those guys in the top 10. I don't know about Darnell. What chat? What are we ch- – guys, guys that are in the chat, what are we thinking about this uh, Darnell to ATL uh, hashtag here? Eddie and Jason have made a convincing argument. But I'm also – I mean, hey, Broderick Jones is great. If Jalen oh, Carter's yeah. there – that's what I was getting ready to say. Jalen Carter's there. Forget. Yeah, it. yeah. No, that's Jalen I mean, Carter's. There. But I'm I'm saying that Jalen's gone. And I and I and I'm saying if they do it, I got no problem with it. I mean, I'm not going to sit there and say, "Yeah, he must take him." And that's the guy. Like, no. But if they did, I think it's a great fit and a great pick. I don't think I don't. I wouldn't consider it a reach. Wow. Well. We we landed there. One guy put, landed- put put it this way: when they drafted Kyle Pitts, I remember, and I was still I was at the end of covering them, and I remember that was toward the end. It was they're going to take Kyle Pitts, aren't they going to? And, and I just thought that was the dumbest thing. He is a receiving tight end only, and you don't take a guy at four with that. Darnell does so much more. Could I think Darnell imagine- is so much more of a complete package at the position. Look, could you imagine? I mean. God I know who Paul wants. Paul wants Will Levis. This no, is I don't know. No, no, I don't want Will Levis. But could you imagine the Falcons going? This wouldn't be back to back, but this would be, this would, be, yeah, technically back to back to back. Tight end at four. First receiver. It's four. a receiver, man. He he is. I, I I don't. I just can't consider him a a, a true tight end. And then, Sorry. and then you're saying take another tight end in the first round. Falcons fans would be jumping off of Mercedes-Benz Stadium if that happened. I think. No, I think they'd be jumping with joy. Not with this guy. This if guy it was different. Michael Mayer, I think they would. But given it's a Georgia player, they'd be like, <laughs> finally, you know, Arthur Michael Blank. Michael Mayer did not. Hey, city. speaking of, he did not look great at the combine. By the way, did not look. Did not look. Uh, I think depending on who you talk to, three different tight ends could be the first tight end taken, depending on the system and who who you talk to. Honestly, you told tight ends up there too, Kincaid. He's yeah. good. I caught him a couple times betting on him late night, uh, betting on Utah late night, and that kid's that kid's great. Yeah, Kincaid's good. Andy Stowe said the Falcons will Falcon. They will trade with the Bears and take. A- <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> well, PTSD boys, it's there. It's Falcons PTSD. Oh, and that's boy. the thing. All of this is moot, is going to be moot anyway because they're going right. to take somebody really stupid, or they might just trade for Lamar. Look, this is what I'm saying. Johnny Bailey says, I, dude. Falcons need to stop drafting skill position players in the first round. That's what doesn't I'm matter. saying. I, it doesn't matter. Like, you know, it, 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 it depends on who the best guy is. If it's Broderick, if Broderick Jones is there and that's on their board as the best available player, take Broderick Jones. If it's anybody, I don't know. I, I'm I'm just agreeing with Eddie. I think it's a fit, and I don't think it's a reach. I guess that that's really my my two points on that. Well, Eddie, I've got to bring in 
uh, the UGA sports Mel Kuyper, if you will. Um, but Eddie, you do know, oh boy. Uh, two weeks from now, we'll be back on the Sunday call in show. So now you've got okay. the schedule, so you can join us. Yeah. And then, uh, also we're doing a live, uh, NFL draft one. So make sure to, you know, catch us there. So thank you boys. All right, Eddie, have a good yeah. week, my man. Paul, That's- before you bring Brent on, I just confirmed to so everyone who's on the UGA sports, who knows, uh, H Holland, the very yeah. famous H Holland. Yeah. In two weeks, he will be on here. He sent me a text. Me and really? Paul are going to own your ass. So, obviously, him and Paul apparently are against me. He's against – if you ever check our text messages, he's against me. He hates me more than Paul. Wow. So, he's going to be on here. I guess I'm going to I'm gonna have to have J- Jason, all, no matter what, it'd be, on, be on my side against those two. But he says he's going to wow. be coming on in wow. two weeks. So, he, he'll get. be making an appearance. That's a good get. That's a good get, man. I like that. Welcome. The man, the myth, the legend, UGA sports own Mel Kuyper, the, the doctor himself, Dr. Rollins, uh, Brent Rollins here. Well, Brent. Andy, Andy's in the comments like. Folks got to understand my Richardson position here. Look, we look gotta, we gotta, off, I got to clear first it up. Off, first off, Brent, first off, Andy's family. OK, I know. You, I know. Come, in, you come at Andy. I love Andy. I'm just saying, Br- Brent. <laughs> I love Andy. He might be a goober peanut butter guy. Paul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a goober. Yeah, he's a goober guy. But you know, it's all right. Um, Brent, first off, before we go to your AR thing, uh, I've been watching the the combine all weekend, uh, just sitting on the couch, and kind of like Penn said, I don't know if you caught it. Penn her zinger dog said he's sick of watching it. I am too. Like I'm, I'm so sick of watching guys just run up and down and uh, jump and stuff like that. But it was the only thing on, so of course I was going to watch it. The guy that you can't name Nolan Smith, the guy from Georgia that made himself the most amount of money this weekend was Broderick Jones. Wow. Wow. Because I think he could be the first tackle taken now. Wow. That's right. And, and the biggest, th- biggest thing for me was his height. Like, yeah. What was, George, what was with that? Listed him at six, four. So I'm thinking he comes in, <laughs> You know, now they're going to be talking about, hey, is it what about his arm length and his height's a little low? And then he's six, five and a half almost. Yeah. Like, that's pro. He is pro to like Daniel Jeremiah did the player comp deal and he did Who it with Inky, uh, Inky Iquanu that Ooh. went, what, seventh or eighth last year? Yeah. So to me, especially if McGarry goes, Broderick to the Falcons at eight is like stamp it done, I think. What about uh, you, you missed it, or you might have heard um, Eddie and then Jason jumped on board, and Ben kind of did too. Uh, try to convince us Darnell Washington at eight to the Falcons was a good idea. No. I said no. no. I just said take the best player available. I didn't say take Darnell. I said I like his. I, I had two points that make sense. Eh, I think know. in terms of fit, it's perfect fit. See, like, perfect but fit. I, it, it, Darnell is a perfect fit with sixteen teams. Mm-hmm. Now, for the most part, that run a lot of two tight end sets, you know, because of the McVay and Shanahan system perpetuating itself throughout the NFL, like he they he is an absolute just he's going to go in the first round because you don't find humans like him that can do that have that skill set, and he's I still think he's at least six seven. I think there's measurements are a little. <laughs> I saw that picture posted with him and the guy from I think Old Dominion that was yeah. also listed at yeah. six seven. Darnell looked taller. Which so. his name, uh, his last name, uh, they did. I'm not going to say it. No, I'm not going to say it either, but <laughs> they obviously they've changed it um, from what it should be. So that's, that's all I'm going to say with that. If you didn't look at it, you need to go look it up. But uh, if Darnell ends up on the Bengals, I might punch a hole in the wall. What, I do not team? stand to see that. Who's, what team did you just say? Darnell to the Bengals would be. Say, one more time. <laughs> Bengals. Like the, like the, more, like the 80s Bungles band, the Bengals? The Bengals? <laughs> yes, the Bengals. <laughs> That's wild. That is – one more time. I, Me being from West Virginia, I fully exactly know what Ben is saying. <laughs> Bengals? <laughs> Bengals. Bang. Like A and G, Bengals. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Bengals. <laughs> They're giving you a hard time, you ben. said it at least six He's times. He's giving you a hard time. <laughs> you should listen to me and uh, – my family talk. I mean, we mispronounce every word differently. So, but no, no, it's just it's just funny that you said bangles because you you said it with such conviction, and then you said it again. Um, tomorrow's manic Monday. 
There we go. <laughs> um, uh, but no, give us your – folks want to know. Folks want to know. So your, we'll be, your, your AR hype. Uh, well, it's, you have, a lot of it's timeline-based. So what happened was, is you know, he comes out for the draft. This is pre-Georgia playing Ohio State. And I put on the board, I'm like, he could be the number one pick. And every, obviously everybody's like, you're insane. But when you think about him from an athletic trait standpoint, like his testing really wasn't that shocking. We knew he was an athletic freakazoid. And like, even if you comped his traits to Kyle Pitts almost, it's very similar. Like it's just, he's that much of a, you know, arm strength, natural fluid athlete, speed, power, all that stuff. I mean, there's a reason Georgia missed more tackles against Florida than any other team in the season they played, him primarily. But once Stroud had the game he had against Georgia, I think to me that cemented his QB2 status because I thought Stroud to me was a mid to late first round guy and because of what he had shown under pressure. And then that ha- game happened against Georgia completely erases that as an issue. And he has the game of his life. But I think I, the, all the draft hype surrounding Richardson, like I just could see it coming because the highlights are the highest of absolute highs. It's stuff that you just don't see other human beings at that position do physically. But the biggest thing for me with him and why I've been saying, hey, the Falcons should take him at eight if he's there is the value part of it. Like you have to have a quarterback in the league. You have to get somebody who, and it gives you three more years of at least cost certainty, low salary cap. Like Ben is starving for the Falcons to trade, uh, trade for Lamar and then pick Richardson. He won't tell you that, but I think he, I bet he is. Wow, um, man. Is that the secret you want? You want AR? Well, trade to take a quarterback. I mean, I would prefer Stroud would be amazing. That'd be number, that'd be top priority. Right. And I, I, I just don't, because the, the assets, I don't think one player is worth like four mm-mm. first round picks, that much cap space. Mm-mm. It's just, it's not. And there are people in the Here's, media who think a quarterback is worth trading like half your offense or half your defense. It's not, it's not worth it. Here's no. something for you. Though. So you're saying you want the Falcons to take Anthony Richardson at eight now. Is that what you're saying? I, I think they should if he's there. Okay. 100%. Okay, hold on, hold on. Look at this. I don't know if you guys follow the Raz. I love the Raz. Ooh, love it. Right? Love that thing. Look what I just uh, comped there. Anthony Richardson, Desmond Ritter. Damn. Damn. Near uh, pretty close there. Just and saying. I, I would leave for- Ritter there. But guess what they stupidly did? They didn't play the kid. Like, he sat the entire season. Like, if he had played eight, ten games, and you'd, uh, you kind of have a much better idea of what you have with him, fine. But now, we'll say this. If they think that Ritter is the guy and can be the, and can have that sort of Jalen Hurts, Eagles model, where it's okay, play a little bit, play four games at the end of your rookie year, start your second year, all year, you know, be a run threat, continually develop as a passer, 100%, do it. I just don't know that I see. I don't believe that from Ritter. I'm just saying, look at look at that. It's pretty close for the uh, measurables there. So yes, very Maybe. true. But um, I, I did see the hype. The biggest thing was I knew the hype train was going to be just off the tracks because it's it's the Twitter world that we live in, right? Where you see the highlights and you see Lewis Riddick's and you know the the Kuipers and the McShays and all those guys and the Dan and Jeremiah saying, "Hey, look, this guy's traits, this guy's physical ability." You know, it was, you know, unparalleled like that's and and then everybody jumps on board and they say, hey, I want my I want my team to get draft this guy. So what I, about I think the that, guy from South Montana State? Because, you know, that's who George is going to end up with. So <laughs> the Falcons or yeah, the Falcons rather. God. So there's, there's another tight end from South Dakota State. I think that's actually pretty good. Oh, and then uh, then you got the that uh, lineman that has no teeth, uh, no two front teeth from, from North Dakota North, State, North Dakota State. So. Yes. I mean, there, there's options out there, Jason. There's, there's options out there. Well, I'm still waiting on this defense of of uh, Anthony Richardson. Like, like what what are okay. we missing? What are we missing? There's one. There's one thing I think that if you want to hold your outside of the physical arm strength stuff and all that, there's one thing to me statistically where that translates to the league and that he was one of the best quarterbacks in college football at, and that is when he was pressured, 
he was rarely ever sacked. I think his pressure to sack rate was right around 9%, which was in the, I think, third or fourth in all of college football. And the way, if you watch him consistently in the pocket, the way he, like, there's one Jalen, there's a Jalen Carter clip that Carter destroys the guard. And then he tries to tackle Richardson and Richardson with his eyes down, just slides a little bit to the left and Carter falls right off of him. Like that trait translates massively to the league. And he's constantly, you watch him in the pocket, always eyes down or eyes up. I mean, always has his eyes downfield and moves and handles pressure really well. The other stuff, like, I think a couple of things. One, I don't like Florida system. I don't think they're going to do anything. I think their team was a three or four win team that he kind of lifted up, even a couple wins. I, I think they were that bad, especially at the receiver position. But also, it, it's just the games are completely different. College and the NFL are completely different. Now, the accuracy part, I think a lot of it's footwork. And those are things, it's not like, like with Cam. When you think about the comparisons with him and Newton, with Cam Newton, like Cam to me always struggled. Like the way he threw and how high he was, how his release point, it was never going to be consistent. I think his throwing motion can be developed to the point of consistency. And it's it's one of those things where, especially if you're like Houston, if you're Houston sitting at two or you're in Indianapolis at four and you're like, hey, I'm going to take a quarterback. And I'm already in the daggone AFC where I have Mahomes, Allen, Burrow, Trevor Lawrence, Herbert, possibly Lamar. Like, I better take a guy that can physically match up with him. Mm. And I, it, and is it worth that chance? I, I Given the fact that those other guys in the conference that you're in, those other guys are going to – like, those guys are going to be there for the next decade. Burrow's not going anywhere. Allen's not going anywhere. Mahomes is not going anywhere. That's the thing for me. That's so, Jason. In your to, in, to answer your question, that's my defense. Is that skill? I think is worth taking a chance on. Now, being the judge in this case, uh, we don't have a jury, so um, I will say that you didn't fully convince me. Um, and you know, I, if you, you you have a very good argument, um, but but you didn't fully get me. But one guy you could you could get us on before we before we leave out of here. We got about three minutes left. Give us your opinion on the old man, old Stetson Bennett the fourth. What I, happened? I, uh, what happened this weekend? He, to me, he cemented his status as a third round. Holy pick. goodness, Jason! You went crazy. You went crazy when I said fourth round. This man says third round. And you sit there with your mouth shut. What? what because it comes from Brent. I, I was, you know, waiting for my turn, <laughs> but I mean, it, it's, it's shocking to me and it's not because I don't think he, you know, again, what I think is, I think he is a third, fourth round guy. I've just seen this third, play out. I've, I've seen this movie before. I've seen I, this movie before. I agree. And the, the other part that hurts him, I think a little bit is the QB needy teams are going to pick the first four guys. Like the, well, yeah. to me, four of the first six picks are going to be quarterbacks. I, I just think it's going to be that way. And the other two are going to be Jalen Carter and Will Anderson. You've got the fourth of his name, Stetson Bennett, going in the third round. I, I bookmarked the tweet that I sent early January. I think with the 85th pick, the Miami Dolphins will select Stetson yes. Bennett the fourth. And he That's will great. kill it. There. Oh, and, and Brent wasn't even watching it. I don't know if he was watching it at the time, but that's where we had him. Yeah, we have him going to the fourth. You fourth give him like to the Dolphins. Give him those two receivers and that coordinator coach and that offense he will produce he guys will. i know brent's a lot better at this than me but I, I said the exact same thing about 30 minutes ago so maybe you guys will start taking me serious i don't know same offense that brock purdy was in because came from the same tree mm -hmm. yeah. look how that turned He's out. better than brock purdy whoa yeah, well he is uh, that's that's for sure out of college he definitely is yeah well brock purdy's also like three or four years younger than him too and brock purdy to be fair and i'm not trying to clown on the kid but like his team is ridiculous his offense yes. around him yeah i That's mean you, next you could, i mean, I mean could, yeah you it's, could put it's Ben a, out there and he, he'd throw for 60 percent <laughs> it's an all oh, pro screens? I could it's an all pro offense. offense yeah it really is and that and by the way and that's what you can do 
when you have a QB on a rookie contract. Like you plethora of weapons. And plus that offense is good. But anyway, yeah, I think the biggest thing for me was with Stetson was the velocity and the deep ball stuff. Like we I think the this 40 where by the way straight up looked like he cost yeah, himself a point oh something. Yeah. <laughs> I mean he, he kind of chilled at the end. And that's just him. Like even the interviews, he just he just beats to his own drum a hundred percent. Real quick, uh you guys, I've got one question for Brent before he goes. Do you guys have a question? We can do like a little like rapid uh fire at him real quick about the draft. Because I've got one. If you don't, it's fine. Sure. Okay. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah I, I think I do have one. I brought okay. it up first in the show. All right. Rapid fire, Brent. Is Bryce Young still the first overall pick in this draft? Yes. Okay. Wow. wow. I'm, I'll defer to Brent. Well, I take that back. Oh. The, only, the only if Indianapolis trades to one, that's the team that I could see going somewhere else. But because they they've historically want bigger quarterbacks. Like that's that's the but I think he's because Bryce is the outlier to me. Like what he does, like he's Alabama is a six win team last year without him. Like man, but he's five ten. Oh, I and that and that was by the way, that's another reason sort of why I thought without Stroud being a part of the conversation, that's why I thought Richardson could potentially be that number one pick because of the hype train with the combo of Bryce being just tiny. I, I and because I bet he I bet he played at 185, 188. He's probably like there's no way in hell he's 204 like, pounds, by the way. I don't like, know what type of lead he put in his shoes last oh, two the weeks, Colts three weeks. OC month. was with Jalen Hurts. Uh, I mean, they, no, the Colts' new head coach was with Jalen Hurts, the OC last year in Philly. Similar deal with Richardson. I'm telling you, the Colts move up to one. Anthony Richardson, I think, would be the first pick. But if the Colts don't, Bears keep it. Is Bryce the first pick? Oh, if the Bears keep the pick, it's Jalen Carter. I think. I still think it's him. As long as you have finality. But, 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 as long but, as you have but, finality with all the ancillary stuff. But yeah, but what we think as of right now, that pick's getting traded and, and Bryce Young will probably be the first. Okay. That's my question. Jason. Okay. Um, Keely Ringo. We talked about this earlier. Ooh. Where does he go? 25 through 29. So he's still a first rounder. I think he's at the very end of the first rounder because I, you just at, at worst he's like thirty third, thirty fourth, kind of like Tyson Campbell, uh, you know. And because the traits, you you know, you, that size, that speed, his coverage. The, the thing about his coverage tape, like when they talk about, you see the draft guys break down like hip and the quickness and some of the, it's everything's in front. Things are being – he's being beaten in front of him. He's not being beaten behind him. He, he doesn't get sort of toasted. And that, to me, is a skill that, depending upon the scheme, like I could see him going to Seattle at 18 even. that's that's To me, that's his ceiling wow. is Seattle at 18 because of the scheme they run. Ben? Yeah, I was going to ask similar to on Ringo. Do you think he's the fifth guy taking? Because I, I asked uh, Jason and Paul because I thought the same thing going into the year. If you would have asked before the season, who's going to be after Jalen Carter, the first Bulldog taken, you would say Keely Ringo, or a lot of people would say him second. Oh. Now I think it's probably fifth. I'm curious if you agree on that. I, I still don't th- – I mean, I still think it'll be Jalen, Broderick, in terms of order. Jalen, Broderick, Nolan, and then it's sort of coin flip with him and Darnell. I still think Darnell, while I think he's a first-round pick, he might end up – in the you know late thirties, just because you know, while we haven't seen teams or we haven't seen someone like that play. And I think he should be a first round pick because of what he is like last year. Think about last year, six, seven, 262 pound tight end that run a four, six, one forty got drafted 73rd overall Jelani Woods. Oh, he had yeah. nothing near Darnell's profile, but size speed comp like 73rd overall. Like, so it's just the value system that they place on. It's not a premium position. Thus, I, I, that's in the latter half of that first round. That's why you often see pe- teams trade up for tackles, corners, you know, premium type positions. Which is crazy, Brent, because there's a comp here, and this guy got drafted in the third round. <laughs> uh, 
Desmond yes. Ritter compared to Anthony Richardson. <laughs> that's 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 weird. Anyways, and also, um, Paul, I did want to bring up some. Are you, Paul, are you in favor of trading up the Falcons to get a quarterback? No, because I was going to say one bit Lamar of Jackson or bust, baby. The six quarterbacks taken since 2011 who a team traded into the top five or just up somewhere in the top five. Trey Lance, Sam Darnold, Mitch Trubisky, Jared Goff, Carson Wentz, RG3. RG3 was the one I was thinking of. Those are the guys who were traded up within the top five or up to get into the top five to take. Jeez. You know what's amazing? is go, I, The other day, or I think it was earlier yesterday, I was just looked QB draft history. Because you think about – you know, we got four guys that are talking about probably being the first six, seven, eight picks. I, how many are off? How often are they good? Like, are all of them good? That the that is such a rarity. Like, even you go back to uh, 04, you had Eli Rivers, Roethlisberger, mm-hmm. but then you had like JP Lossman, I think, at the end of the first round. He was garbage. Like, so there, there, it's such a rarity that all of them are good. Right. Somebody's going to fall on their face. Well, guys, we've been here entirely too long. So we appreciate you guys for staying with us as well. If you missed any of the show, you can head over to UGAsports.com. I'll post it up over there or also on the uh, pod bean. So you can get it wherever you get your podcast. This will be on there as well. We appreciate our sponsors, the Rogue Shop, for sponsoring this. We'll be back in two weeks uh, to talk about these Georgia Bulldogs. Pro Day should be right around then, too, guys. So uh, stick with us, and uh, we appreciate you joining. And as always, uh, this is the UGA Sports Show, Sunday call show, presented by UGA Sports. Jason from Jason Butt, Ben Bachman, The Doc. I'm Paul Meharry. We'll talk to you guys later. Thanks so much.